All right. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you what, we, uh, we live in a world today, and I'm telling you what's the truth, seems like everything, uh, our world just abounds in counterfeits. Yeah. I'm telling you, uh, you know, when, uh, When I think about it, and you know, God's Word teaches us that we got counterfeits in the church just like we have out in the world. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, amen. But uh, there's one thing for sure. We may fool them that's around us, but we don't fool God because He knows our heart. Amen. Don't. Amen. That's what I want to talk to you about. Turn to the book of James. I want to preach to you on real Christians. Real Christians. Book of James. Let's see your Bible. How many got your Bible? All right. All right. Thank God. How many of you believe it's the Word of God? Amen. Amen. How many of you believe how many of you believe that it will do everything it Amen. says it will do? Yes, sir. Amen. How many of you believe you can be everything it says you can be? Amen. Amen. I believe that. That's the only thing that I uh, uh, old Dr. Feel Good does that I like when he uh, <laughs> when he holds that Bible up. I, I appreciate uh, the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you something uh, as I study him this week. I, you know, the Word of God, brother, will cut you and it'll put, it'll, it'll show you right down where you live. And, uh, and I thank God for that. But in uh, the book of James, chapter 1, James chapter 1, and we're going to start reading with verse 21, says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfilthy of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Amen. I like that, don't you? Yes. All right, amen. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving, and underline this, your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh then to the perfect law of liberty, underline those uh, three words, law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man, underline this, shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you and here's where we're going to get our text. If any man among you seem to be religious, bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is vain. Amen. And I want you to underline that. That man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and underline this, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Father, as I come to you today, I come just like I've always come, realizing I'm nothing without the uh, Holy Ghost, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. There won't be any preaching done. But I ask one more time, God, that you'd help me to decrease that you might increase. Father, would you anoint us one more time? Help me to give you the very best, God, that I've got this morning. Give us clarity of mind and of speech. Help us, Lord, to deliver our hearts and soul for thee today. No, oh, God, after we've given you the very best we've got, anoint it, Father. Father, may this message sink deep into the hearts of our folk, and we'll be careful to praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we ask, Amen. Amen. You know, I, I, uh, this week is, I carry, uh, every week when I carry the uh, tape to the, or the disc to the radio station, 
uh, to leave it. Uh, I'll listen to it uh, before I carry it. Uh, and the reason is, uh, sometimes, uh, and I guess if I turn this on, you'll probably hear me, but uh, sometimes uh, when we carry uh, 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 the disc, I want to make sure, I don't know about y'all, but everything that I do for God, I want to make sure it's right. Amen. And I don't want to take a tape or something down there uh, that wouldn't be right. And, and, and uh, I make mistakes, and I'm going to tell you this, I ain't got all the answers. I don't know everything. I'm not a scholar. I don't claim to be. But I'll tell you this, if it's done through the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God, it'll work. And so uh, that's why I, I, I know that I need God in everything Amen. that I do. Amen. And I hope that you understand that you do. When you right. study in your Sunday school lesson, don't sit there and read it like a book. It ain't going to help you none. But when you start to study that Sunday school lesson, before you start, take a minute and pray. And ask God to open that high, high scripture to you. Now we get... Our Sunday school books, of course, have a commentator, and and he, uh, whoever does that does a good job. But I want you to understand something. Uh, everybody don't agree on everything in the Word of God, but if the Holy Ghost reveals it to you, then you can count on that. It'll work. Uh, but I want you to notice today, uh, real Christianity. And, uh, you know, uh, the first thing I want to ask you is what is feigned religion? James said 1 and 26 uh, that our tongue uh, betrays us. A true Christian controls his tongue. And then, uh, you know, uh, feigned religion is, uh, that word feigned uh, simply means uh, to pretend or a likeness of. Right? Am I right, Adam? Right. that? So I, I don't want to be a likeness of nothing. No. I want the real thing. Amen. And I want to tell you something, folks. I, I, it don't. I, it ain't a bit harder to get the real thing than it is to get an imitation. Yeah, right. Now uh, I, I told them uh, when we were growing up, uh, uh, Mama she'd buy that. You know, milkman come around. And they had that old uh, what they call that stuff, uh, orange aid. I don't know what they call it now, but uh, back then it's called orange ale. Yeah. It looked like orange juice, but the very minute you tasted of it, you know it wasn't orange juice. It, it was an imitation. Mama would buy that stuff and try to fool us, but it wasn't orange juice. We know the difference. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, we was poor and Mama had to get what she could, you know, and, and we appreciated the orange age, you know. But uh, uh, what, do you, what do you get that, preacher? I'm getting at this. We've got so many imitators going around uh, this world today. I have never seen a time. Now you hear me. My folks tell me that they're children of God. But I'm going to tell you this. If we as children of God, we'd look a little different than we look. We'd act a little different than we act. And we'd be a little different than we are. And I'm telling you, uh, uh, it would show up in our everyday life. Uh, uh, if we're children of God, uh, I uh, will get up and come to the house of God on yeah, Sunday. Uh, uh, Sunday yeah. morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You know what, preacher? I just can't get up. If you are a child of God like you say you are, you would make an effort uh, yeah. uh, to get up and get in the house of God yeah. on Sunday morning, yeah. Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Yeah. Amen. Now, I understand, Glenn, you're away on weekend. You can't. But I'm telling you, when you're in town, you ought to be at the house of God. Every one of us. And I'm going to tell you something else. We look at how in the world do we expect to win folks around us when our lives don't reflect any different than theirs does. Amen. They don't get up and go to church because they're they not supposed to. They ain't children of God. We're children of God. We're supposed to get in the house of God. Amen. We get a thousand excuses for why we don't. But I'm going to tell you what. If God will honor your excuse, it's all right with me. And I've said this a thousand times. Excuse ain't nothing but a lie with a ribbon tied around. I could have got up this morning and said, Oh, I'm aching and I'm hurting and arthritis has got me. And I could stay at the house and I could have called Alan and said, Alan, 
Uh, how about you taking care of it? But I'm going to tell you this. I'd have hurt just as bad at home as I do here. And there ain't no excuse for not coming to the house of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 I'm telling you the truth. Now, don't quit on me. Stay with me. Now, listen. Uh, James said, uh, number one is our tongue betrays us. A true Christian will control that tongue. Now, what he's saying uh, in Ephesians 4, 29, if you want to go to it, you can. Uh, but I believe it says something like this. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may uh, minister grace to the hearers. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Amen. In other words, what we say ought to be something that will help somebody right. down the road. Amen. You know, now listen to me. Some of you are going to swell up when I say this. But I'm telling you this yeah, yeah, and talking about one another and criticizing one another. Uh, you get out there and run everybody yes, in the church are. down and how in the world do you expect folks to come to a church? Wonder why the church won't grow? Hey, folks don't want to go where folks running everybody down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. If I don't go to a church, hey, I'm back with dirt at home. <laughs> Amen. 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 If I want to fight, I'll go down to the beer joint where there's somebody who'll fight me. But if I, when I come to the house of God, I want to come somewhere where folks are peaceable, where folks love one another, where folks care about one another, where folks want to help one another. You ain't never helped nobody by running them down. I'll tell you what you will do. Susie made a statement this morning. In Sunday school, oh. or before Sunday school, I think you did, didn't you, about the church that you went to? Yeah. yeah. She was out in the yard one day. She missed a Sunday service, and she was out in the yard one day, and they come by and scolded her for not being at church. Well, in the first place, if they didn't scold and done, let me do it. I'm the pastor. That's right, amen. <laughs> Come on, amen. Or let Adam do it. He's a social <laughs> I'd rather Adam do it. <laughs> then you can get mad at him. <laughs> but we don't have the right to scold somebody. Come on, man. When I get everything right in my life, when I hadn't got nothing in my life between me and God, when I can walk a week perfectly, then I got a right to say something to somebody else. But none of us are perfect. None of us have the right to condemn anybody else. We don't have that right. God alone has that right. I'm telling you, we are to love one another. Amen. That's called conviction. That's right. You know, <laughs> but you, Come on now. you hear folks, and listen, we live in a neighborhood, I don't have to mind my business, because there's about four or five in that community where I live that minds it for me. I don't even have to worry about who goes in my house, because they see everybody goes in, and everybody in the community knows who goes and who comes, and when they go and when they come. Susan and I bought that truck and before we got to town with it, everybody in town knows we bought a truck. <laughs> Come on, brother. And I don't want out to come to church to have all that junk going on in the church. Right, a church ought to be somewhere where we can come and, and put all that stuff uh, uh, that we've had to deal with all week long. We ought to be able to leave that out yonder on the doorstep or over here on the doorstep and come in the house of God and worship God without having to worry about somebody being swelled up and puffed up Amen. and mad at that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. 
But he, you know, and uh, and I want to know, I want you to notice something. Turn to Matthew 12 and 31. I'm going to take my time. If, if we two o'clock getting out of here, I'm going to preach this message. Oh, <laughs> Matthew 12 and 31. It says, Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sins may be forgiven unto men, but the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Now, in this, if you'll go back and you'll read why Christ made this statement. The Pharisees, Christ had just, uh, just healed some folks. He had made a, a dumb man to talk. And the first thing that bunch of self-righteous Pharisees began to do was to say he done it by a devil. They blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Right. The work was done through the Holy Ghost and they give the credit to the devil. Listen, right. we give that rascal too much credit. Amen. That's, right. That's the point I'm trying to bring out here today. We give Satan credit for junk that he ain't got no business having credit for. Amen. Now let me tell you something. Bless your heart. Well, I would have been there, but Satan hindered me. No, Satan didn't hinder you. You hindered me. Amen, brother. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'd have got up and been in church this morning, but uh, Satan done this and Satan done that. No, listen. What did the Bible tell us about sin? We sin when we are drawn away by our lust yeah. and then enticed. So, Satan entices us, but the first part of that comes home to us. Right. It's because we're drawn away by the yeah. things we want to do. Yeah, there you go. We can get in a boat and we can ride up and down the river all day long on Saturday. But come time to go to the house of God on Sunday, we give out because we rode up and down the river all day Saturday. Bless your heart. Me and Susie went to the river Saturday, but we got up and come to the church on Sunday. On, now I'm going to tell you something. When that alarm clock went off this morning in my bedroom at 6 o'clock, I wanted just to throw that thing against the wall. Amen, but I knew it was time for me to get up and come to the Lord's house. And I got in there and I got to wash and I got more to wash than most of you have. <laughs> I got in there and I got to washing and I got to getting ready to go to church. <laughs> Boy, the next thing you know, bud, I begin to feel good. I began to think Amen. about going, coming down and seeing all y'all. I met uh, Cheryl and I said, hey man, how you doing? She said, hey woman, how are you? <laughs> I pick at Cheryl all the time because she's so good at picking. <laughs> But I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning, Jeremy. Amen. I look forward to seeing Ken on Sunday morning. I look forward to seeing all of you. And when I see Mama come across that road, and I know that it's just hard for her to get here, and she comes in and sits down on the pew back there, and she's got oxygen, and Amen. she's trying to breathe, her, the rest of us ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Amen. I'm telling you, if they can get up and come to the house of God. If Brother King can come in on that little old walker that he got, and I know it's hard for him to get up and get ready, but he's gonna be at church on Sunday. If he can do that, shame on us if we can't. I'm telling you, our life ought to reflect that we Christians. Now I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart we got a lot of counterfeits. Thank they saved. Went through the motion of being saved. But they ain't never been saved. That's right. Why? Because right. their life does not reflect it. I believe if there's a change inside, it'll show outside. Right. Amen. 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 I don't even know where I got. I ain't even had this out, man. Come on, brother. 
James said, pure religion and undefiled is this, that we visit the widows, or the childless and the, uh, the widows, fatherless and the widows, I believe the way he put it, in their afflictions, and what? Keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Yeah. Amen. Now, I want to ask you something. Do you believe the church is the bride of Christ? Amen. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Okay. I want to ask you this, women. You get ready to get married and you got on that pretty white dress and you start down the aisle and you look down and there's a big old spot on that dress. You ain't going to wear that thing, are you? Why, they ain't no woman wants that, or no bride wants that big spot showing on her dress. We the bride of Christ. Amen. We don't want that big spot shining on our chest where the world sees that we're counterfeit, that our life doesn't mount up to what we say it is. Brother, I want my, I want my garment to be spotless when I stand before God. And I'm here to tell you, if there's ever been a time we need to go to the cleaners, it's the day we're living in today. Who's the cleaner? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Brother, we need a cleansing. Brother, we need our church to be pure. I'm telling you, if there's ever been a time we need it, it's a day we're living in today. Both are dying and going to hell by the multitude. We have family we say we're concerned about dying and going to hell, and we live it like the devil. Amen. Amen. Bless your heart. Won't even get up and come to church. I expect to get your folks in church if you don't come yourself. Bless your heart. You know, we may not be perfect, but we can be pure. Right. Amen. 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 Susie thought she was getting a perfect man when she got me. <laughs> <laughs> if you believe that, I'm going to talk to you at church. I got some property to sell. <laughs> We may not be perfect, but we can be pure. Amen. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this. And I want you to understand, this, uh, this month is supposed to be a month of prayer for our nation. Yeah. Our nation ain't perfect. Lord knows she's got her problems. And Brother Obama... Don't help it none. And every time I see him on television, moving forward, I wonder which direction he calls forward. I think he needs a compass. Because I ain't seen no forward movement in a long time in our nation. When we bow down to, uh, to folks that don't even know the God that our nation serves, when we, uh, when we lower our standards, uh, when we say, okay, uh, we'll go kiss their hand if, uh, uh, if it'll keep us out of war with them. Amen. Let me tell you something. We've kissed enough hands and we've kissed a few feet. Amen. We need to stop it, and our nation needs to be proud of it. We've got men that fought in World War uh, One, World War Two. Uh, the Korean conflict, uh, the Vietnam War, uh, and Desert Storm, Desert Shield, all these wars that our men and women have fought in to keep this nation uh, out of where we can say we're one nation Amen. under God, on, that we elect one man and he goes in there and changes all of it with a stroke of a pen. There's something wrong with that. And we stood by and we took it long enough. We need to stand up as children of God and say, I love God. This is a Christian nation. And whether you accept it or not, Amen. Mr. Obama, we're going to preach it. We're going to live it. We're going to say it. We're going to shout it. And we're going to do what God called us to do. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
bless your heart. I find in the Bible where we're supposed to honor those that are in authority over us. And there's one exception to that. And that's when it goes against the word of God. Amen. Brother, he's went against everything the word of God stood for. I don't honor him. I have no use for him. He may be your president, but he's not mine. He's a Muslim. And I'm telling you, I believe the God I serve. Amen. I believe that he, that man that he stands for stinks in God's nostril. Amen. 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 <clears throat> when he tells me I can't preach in my pulpit against homosexuality I'll tell him hogwash Amen. Amen. I believe with all my heart if there's ever been a time that we need to stand up and be counted for right. We need to show that we're the real thing. Yeah. That there are real Christians Amen. in the United States of America. That there are people that actually care about this country. There are people that actually care about one another. There are people that actually care about their children and their families being saved. Uh, they care about what they're being taught in school. Oh, preacher. You're going to sure enough get in trouble. Go to meddling with the school. I'm going to tell you something. That's got more it's about the uh, biggest corruption around Amen. us is the school system. Amen. When, they tell, when they tell our children that they can't pray in school no more, yeah. when they tell them they can't wear anything that has a Bible verse on it, uh, I'm going to tell you something, folks. We're living in bad times. Yes, we are. Amen. Amen. They can't even wear jewelry that reflects uh, Christianity. But yet they can put on them old rock and roll shirts and wear them all they want to. They can put on the Ozzy Osbourne t-shirt. Uh, I one that don't even know what God is and they can wear that to school all day long. But you better not I wear nothing that reflects the cross. I'm going to tell you it states in God's nostrils. We sat around and let it happen. But it's time we stood up and we told our superintendent of education, we're not going to put up with it any longer. Our children that are Christians have just as much right to pray to their God as Obama does here. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. I bet you there'll be one of them things read over this one, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Right. <laughs> now, I don't find the radio station. They just try and stay on there. But uh, they say uh, that's not, uh, not their opinion or whatever, but it ought to be if they're a child of God. It ought to be their opinion too. Amen. 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 If they lose their license, they just lose them, but they ought to stand for something too. Yes. Amen. <laughs> you know what? We've got to the point where the almighty dollar controls everything. Right. We can't do this. They'll cut off our federal funding. Yeah. Well, let them cut it off. That's right. They'll cut off our food stamps. Let them cut them off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That needs to be cut off. <laughs> I'm telling you. Amen. It seems... Lord have mercy. I don't know how I've got in this. <laughs> let me tell you something. We need to live what we profess. Right. We need to quit being a counterfeit. Yeah. There's enough of them out there in the world today. I see every time I see one of these politicians take a microphone, somebody asked me at work the other day, said, did you listen to President Obama's speech the other night? I said, no, nor Bill Clinton's neither. Amen. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> Well, did you listen to, what's that other name? Mitt, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney? I said, no, I didn't listen to him neither because he ain't nothing but a crook neither. Amen. He's probably the lesser of the two evils, but he ain't right. nothing but a crook himself. Preacher, you ought not to talk about folks like that. Let me tell you something. 
God called me to preach. That's right. And he told me to preach it without fear. Yeah, amen. Amen. And if I stood here, I'd be a good one to stand here and tell y'all, uh, you ain't got nothing to fear but fear itself. Yeah. And then stand here shaking in my right. shoes, afraid to get up and make yeah. a statement that somebody might think contradictory. Uh, what do you call that one? What's that word? That's right. Is that right? Yeah. Contradict. Yeah, that's right. I am contradictory. <coughs> Contradictual. I've been that way all my life. If God didn't say it, I ain't going to preach it. If it don't matter, if what I'm preaching don't mount up to that right there, you don't need me, you need somebody else. Oh, now I'm telling you something else. We got a lot of churches that ought to get rid of their pastor. If he's too dumb uh, to stand up there and preach the word of God, you need to get rid of him anyway. You say, preach, you're not calling dumb. I'm going to tell you something. The Bible tells me the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Brother, I'm telling you, we better go back to God's presence and to God's word and I'm telling you if we ain't doing it we're dumb I don't fear man he can't do nothing but punch my ticket to glory anyway but I fear God and it ain't a fear like I stand in Trump on quake afraid that he's a big God that's wanting to do something to me it's a fear like I had for my daddy I loved my daddy and I respected him. He told me if I done something wrong, he's gonna whoop me for it. And he as good as his word. Amen. God has told me the same thing. If you get out there and you get out and uh, out of my will and you go to doing your own thing and you go to doing it your way I'm going to whip you for it and he's good as his word I promise you if you, uh, if you don't believe that I'll show you some stripes brother I'm telling you God is tired of this mess he's tired of us with a little old backbone like Peabine we need to get a backbone about us and we need to be real Christians amen, amen. You know, there was a time when folks cared about one another. They had come to one another's aid. And uh, that's one thing that I want to say about this church. I've never seen one of its members that needed help that this church didn't try to help. Right. And I love you for that, and I appreciate you for that, because I believe that's what we ought to be. Amen. Now listen, there's a lot of folks that take advantage of that. Right. There's some folks that every time you turn around, they got their hands stuck out. Yeah. They live by going from one church to another, begging and, and right. uh, seeking donations. Not because they need it, because they're too sorry to work. Yeah, come on, brother. Amen. 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 <laughs> a lot of folks ain't going to like this, you know that. Come on, brother. They ain't going to be near as, they ain't going to be hitting YouTube near as much after this message, probably. <laughs> but I believe with all my heart that the church. And I'm talking about not Pine View, but the church in general. I believe with all my heart that if we were what we said we were, there wouldn't be any need for welfare. Right. Because the churches would take care of those that were in true need in their communities. Now, them other folks that want to lay there and starve to death, if they're too sorry to work, they ought to be, they ought to do without. They ought not to eat. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. That's hard, isn't it? it is. But I'm telling you, and I know y'all get frustrated program after program after program. And you know what that is for? To get us dependent on the government. Amen. And if they can get you dependent on the government, then they can do you any way they want to do you. Amen. We need to get away from that junk. Now, I believe that if we got folks that genuinely need it, the government ought to help them. Right. But not just because they're so sorry they won't do nothing for their sake. Right. 
Now, I believe that the church in this last time, and I, I, I know y'all get tired of hearing that for the last uh, six months every time me, Ellen, or anybody else goes behind this stand. Uh, that's all we talk about. But I'm telling you, there's a reason for us talking about that. Right. Right. We hadn't got long. That's right. Amen. Brother, uh, if the Lord doesn't call us out tomorrow, uh, today I'm looking for Him tomorrow. I believe that it is that close. And if you, uh, if you have been watching the news, if you have been watching what's going on, it's what we're one button push away. Right. Now I'm yeah. telling you, it could happen today. Right. I'm surprised that it didn't happen on the 11th. Mm -hmm. It is that close. Why, preacher, do you say that? Brother, this thing has been fulfilled. Amen. They ain't nothing left to be fulfilled except that's the right. church going home. That's right. Amen. I'm telling you, that's the next great event. And I'm telling you, it could come today. And I wish it would. I understand every day that I live. Why old John said, even so come, Lord Jesus. He saw all that mess and all the trouble that's going on. I'm telling you, if it don't make you homesick, there ain't nothing will. You need to get in this altar because your wood is wet. Come on, brother. Amen. 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 Bless him, Lord. People are looking for something that's genuine. Now, I got one more point to make, and then I'm going to let you go. I don't know how far I am in the cracker barrel time now. Come on, Listen. Brother, this is God's time. When I see all of these things going on around us, and when I go to my children and I ask them to come to church and the first thing I hear is I'm good as some of them are go down there. Oh. And they don't even know who goes down here. <laughs> but they compare the church, our church, to every other church. Yeah. That's right. When when I have, I call somebody and I talk to them and uh, I begin to witness to them. And the first thing I hear is, my goodness, look at what old so-and-so does and he claims to be a Christian. If he's a Christian, I'm as good as he is. See, they don't understand that the only difference in you and me is that we've got, you, you and them, is that we've got the blood of Jesus supplied to our heart. We're still not a perfect people. We still make mistakes. But they don't see that. All they see is our testimony is this and our life is this. We have got to, in this day that we're living, if there's ever been a time that we need to be genuine, it's the day that we're living in today. If there's ever been a time that we need genuine Christians, it's the day we're living in today. We need to put aside and listen, all of us. Uh, uh, I, I, I know I see Alan down there teaching on Wednesday night, and I see when some points are made, I see, I see that question mark come up on people's face. Everybody ain't gonna agree with everything Brother Alan said. And whether you agree with it or not, that don't change. That's Brother Adam's belief, and we've all got our yeah. belief. Now, is Adam right in everything he teaches? Probably not. Am I right in everything I teach? No, sir. Absolutely not. But there's one thing for sure. We can all agree on one thing, and that's the plan of salvation. Amen. It ain't hard to understand. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not hard to understand when, uh, uh, when Jesus said uh, uh, that being baptized in his likeness, we ought to walk in the new, or the Bible said we ought to walk in the newness of life. Right. Ain't nothing hard to understand about that. Amen. 
When we went through his death, resurrection, uh, death, burial, and resurrection in baptism, that's simply what that means. That old man has died out. A new man has uh, sprung forth, right. and our life should reflect that. Amen. 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 It ain't hard to that's understand. Right. There's some things in this book that I don't understand. It tells us that there's mysteries in here. Yeah. There's mysteries that none of us will understand until right. we get home. Amen. But I'm going to tell you this. There's one that I do understand. I understand for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. And I believe we as a church, I don't care where we Baptist, Methodist, Holiness, Presbyterian, whatever we are, we all got to believe that and if we believe that and we preach that from our pulpit we live it in our life brother it'll get the attention of those that are watching amen amen, amen. 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 and nothing else we we need to live our life and this is the last point as if today was the last day we had. Right. If every one of us knew that before morning we was going to stand before God, there'd be people that we've hurt we'd go to and apologize right. to. Right. Right. There'd be people Man. that have hurt us right. that we'd go to and we'd make that thing right. right. Mm -hmm. You hear me? You hear what right. I'm saying? Amen. There'd be grudges that have been carried for years right. that'd be, that'd be settled right. in just a few minutes. If we believed right. what we said we believed, our life would reflect it. Mm -hmm. Genuine Christians don't carry grudges. That's right. Come on, brother. Genuine Christians love like they want to be loved. Amen. The golden roof. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Ain't that the golden roof? Right. Jesus said it was a commandment that he gave. Yeah. The first and love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. The second one I give unto you, which is likened to the first, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's hard to do, isn't it? I love old fat boy. I feed him when he's hungry. I get him something to drink when he's thirsty. If he's sick, I take him to the doctor. Amen. Come on. Come on. He gets in trouble with dirt, he apologizes. <laughs> get in trouble with God. I go to him. Amen. I don't go to Adeline and ask Adeline to go to God for me. I don't have to do that. God bless Amen. your heart. But I get down on my Amen. knees. Amen. And I say, God, I failed you miserably again today. Would you just one more time forgive me? Lord, I don't want to stand before you The sin in my life. I don't want that spot on my karma when I stand before him, brother. I want to stand there clean. Uh, amen. When I think of what he's done for me, I think of what he went through. Just so that I might be saved. When I think of that mercy that he'd shown me. Have you ever thought about this? Everybody wants mercy, but few want to extend it. We need to come
come together as a body in Christ. We need to love like he loved. We need to give like he gave. We need to work like he worked. We need to live like he lived. Stand with us if you will.